Hello, I'm Melissa Wu from EXP Realty. Today, I want to share a little bit about why I joined EXP Realty. So I have to start by telling you that I've been a realtor since 2003. Um, so now it's 2021, 2021, and it's already September. So I will be almost, I think, 18 years as a realtor. So from this 18 years, I've been uh, top 1% for nine years and top 10% for 16 years. You can see this plaque here that um, is a 16 years of plaque uh, from the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. So meaning that I sell houses more than 90% of the agents for the last 16 years and sell more houses than 99% um, of the agents for almost a decade. So um, I've sold over 1,000 uh, residential detached homes. That's my area of focus. And uh, for Vancouver West Side, East Side, a uh, little bit in Richmond and a little bit in Burnaby. I live in uh, the Canby area, so very central. So I serve uh, mostly Vancouver West and Vancouver East. So if you have a property that you're thinking of selling definitely can contact me can give you an evaluation but today I want to talk about why an agent should join EXP Realty especially if you're a top producing agent I like to drink sparkling wine to crunch my thirst but here is the um, reason why uh, we join real estate when I join real estate is because I want to make money of course um, I've done a lot of other jobs. So before I was a realtor, I had um, I had a, my own retail store in Carisdale, selling like clothes and fashion. Uh, um, I, because I also worked at WestJet for two years. With WestJet, um, I have a lot of uh, flying benefits. I can go to Los Angeles or um, you know anywhere where WestJet fly with a standby pass. So I would fly down to LA. I would get like close like this and then I would bring it back to my retail store in Carousel and I would sell it and before that um, actually during the same time I was working at TELUS my first job out of UBC I was I had a double major in UBC double majored in economics and Asian studies so gradually graduated with a bachelor's degree um, right away I got a job um, at that time it was uh, 1997 and the job pays about 20 $22 an hour, which is really good in 1997. So uh, I got the job right away. I worked at TELUS for five years, um, taking phone call as an operator. So when you press zero, I am your operator. So um, do that for five years. It was getting really boring because you're taking calls every day, thousands of calls. So, um, you know, then I, I was uh, also entrepreneur. I want to start my own business. So at the same time, working at TELUS as a graveyard operator, I also um, did other things. I studied um, mutual fund. I got my mutual fund license and my life insurance license. So I was working for a company at the same time um, called Primerica, which is kind of like a network marketing company that sells life insurance and mutual funds. So I did that for two years. And uh, yeah, so, but it didn't, I didn't make money, but I learned a lot. And that was the first time uh, when it was in the um, company office, kind of, we had an office and it had a whole bunch of books that you can borrow and bring, ho bring home. One of the books was Release the Giant Within from Tony Robbins. So that was the first um, kind of first time I've heard of Tony Robbins and a lot of self-improvement books. So with Primerica, actually, I learned a lot on how to um, work with uh, network marketing. I learned a lot and self-development, how to believe in yourself that you can accomplish anything you want. But I didn't make much money during that time. That was 1997 and I did that for two years. Then, yeah, so five years at uh, real estate. Uh, sorry, go back. You had to cut that little part. So when I was um, working at TELUS, I also had my um, store in Carousel. It was called Melissa & Co. because there was nearby a boutique that I really liked. And uh, I was thought, oh, I should open a store. Maybe I would do really well. But um, actually, I didn't make any money in the retail part. The money I made was buying the retail shop. I just went on to online. That time already we had online. Uh, Realtor.ca and I found a, a shop. 
It was 111,000 that time in Carisdale. And I thought, oh, that was a good price. I could probably buy it. I bought it and then um, had the store. Uh, my dad and I renovated it and, you know, I was selling clothes, um, buying it from LA with my buddy pass, my standby pass. So yeah, so run the store for about a year. And during that time, um, real estate, that was uh, two, already fast forward to 2003, the summer of 2003. So my father had $50,000 saved in his bank account. He already paid off his mortgage and he saved $50,000. And he said, oh, I want to buy a Mercedes uh, SUV. And my mom and I said, oh, okay, well, hmm, I'm not sure if that's a good idea because with 50,000, that time a house was only uh, 250,000 in Vancouver. This is uh, 2003. So my mom and I, I had a conversation maybe we should get my dad to buy a house instead so we circle around our neighborhood and um, we call the sign that we you know just behind my parents house there was a house for sale oh we should get that as a rental property so I called a real estate agent called and called and finally reached through to the real estate agent and he came over to my parents house and he was a top one percent realtor so um, we, after a couple of negotiations, um, my parents decided to, you know, finally convince my dad not to get the car and get the house instead. And yeah, so it, it worked, turned out really well. We made some good money on that property, but we met my mentor. He was a top 1% realtor. And I said, oh, wow, what does that mean, top 1%? He means I sell a lot of houses. I sell over a hundred homes last year. And I asked him, how much money did you make? He said, oh, I made 150,000 last year. That's a lot of money because it's more than half a house you can make in one year. That's a lot of money. So I said, oh, then I asked him, do you think I could be a realtor? And he said, of course, Melissa, in Vancouver, you're Asian, you speak Chinese. It's the best occupation for you. So yeah, so I, you know, that was the summer of 20, 03. Then I went to um, went online and got my course and passed the exam. Then uh, I passed. I didn't really study it during the summer, but it took me two months, two months, and then I just uh, did all the multiple choice and I joined a study group. The study group said, "Oh, you study these one thousand questions, and they will come up in the multiple choice." So yeah, then I um, passed the exam. Then I went to the office. I went to the office and talked to my mentor. Oh, uh, is there something for me to do here? Um, I'm here to work. How do I, <laughs> what do I do now? So he said, oh, you just come to the office and uh, you can call the phone book. And oh, by the way, here's a for sale by owner. Do you want to give this person a call? Yeah, for sure. I would give them a call. Then I called the for sale by owner and then I just kept calling them almost five times a day. And then finally she decided to meet with me and list the house with me actually. She gave me the listing, I, it was my first listing and then I actually sold the property and I actually double ended it as well. So that was um, that was um, amazing experience. And of course, uh, my mentor, um, he's a builder and uh, we were introduced to a lot of builders. I speak Chinese. So the builders would buy the land and build the home and I would sell it to um, Chinese buyers in Vancouver. So it worked out really well um, for the first few years. But then I realized that later on, it was so much work for me when you custom build a home for a client. Um, it's always constant phone call. You always have to go to um, construction sites. So, which is fine. I learned a lot. Um, but then later on, I thought, you know what? This is a lot of work. You have to you know, be the uh, kind of customer service for a long process because building a home, it takes anywhere from six months to a year and a half. So that was a lot of work. So I decided to um, probably do just uh, get, get listings. Maybe I'll just get more listings and not have to um, customer service everyone for a year and a half. It was a great learning experience. I learned a lot about construction. The home that I'm living in right now is uh, built by my brother. It also inspired my older brother um, to get into construction and build houses. So fast forward a little bit because then I learned how to, I had another mentor who taught me how to get expired listings. Um, that time it was not so popular and not that many YouTube's were available online so you you didn't really know the scripts to um to get expiry but i joined some mentor in my company and also another mentor that i met when i had uh, some transaction he goes oh melissa i'll show you how to get expiries um when they're expired you just call them and then we would call a lot of expired listings and we get a whole bunch of listings so that's how my career kind of kind of just took off my first year when i joined my 
、uh, my mentor, I was Rookie of the Year, and then the second year I was already、uh, Medallion, and then I was、uh, top twenty five in my first company that I joined, which is Royal Pacific Realty. I was with that company, I think, like in my fourth year,、um, I was top three.、Um, so because I took a lot of expired listings,、um, probably made some, you know. Not so friendly connections with like former listing agents, but yeah, that happens, right? When you take a expired listing. So after、um, you know, I did really well, and then I got headhunted by another、um, kind of recruited to another brokerage, which is an, another boutique brokerage、uh, with my mentor's mentor who taught my mentor how to、um, sell real estate. So I、uh, got because I had a. A little bit conflict with my first manager, my first brokerage, because I was taking so many listings.、Um, you know, I just couldn't handle all. I had like at one point fifty listings on my own. It was a, it was quite a lot of listings. So、um, my signs were not even company color. I think I got in trouble for that. So he said, Melissa, you know, you, your sign is not approved by manager. It's not、um, a bright red. It's a burgundy red. It's not allowed. Take down all your signs. So I got a little bit like offended, and、uh, the company that was trying to recruit me, he goes, "Don't worry, Melissa, I'll change your signs overnight." Okay, so I went to his company for、um, that was、uh, SRS Real Estate. So with my,、uh, I still call him my boss, Mr. Satnam Baines. So my mentor is、uh, Mr. Bal Dave Sandu.、Uh, with you know my mentors are amazing. They really helped me to get into my career. So. Mr. Satnam Baines、uh, recruited me to SRS Victoria Realty. He was a super、uh, walking encyclopedia for real estate. So I joined his company. He would give me an award every every month. Top listing agent, top listing agent, because I was getting all these listings. Very good at signing listings.、Um, but after eight months, I realized that I'm kind of like, if you are the kind of Smartest few people in a room. You could be in the wrong room. Then I said,、um, you know, I feel like I need to have a breakthrough.、Um, so I moved to another com- local company, which is ha- which had a few franchises. Is Sutton West Coast Realty, which is very close to my parents' house, which is only five minutes away, and also in the west side on Canby Street. So I decided to join that company, and、uh, met、um, Mary Lee, who was the coach and kind of business owner partner realtor. Um, coach of、uh, Sutton West Coast Realty. So I、um, I called Mary Lee. I go Mary Lee.、Um, I would like to move to、uh, Sutton. So she gave me her office actually in Sutton County office. So I just started, just moved over, and then I got.、Uh, I always had a secretary, a secretary who helped me do all my paperwork, upload onto MLS. Um, just fix all my doc, like you know, prepare the documents, prepare my offer, prepare my listings, and、um, prepare my ads. So that was my administrative girl. So I've always had her, and I hired also、um, a showing assistant or a runner who would run around for me, install lock boxes,、uh, help to take photos, double check measurements,、uh, give access.、Um, so that was my runner showing assistant. So if I had that three leg business and. After in Sutton for almost like eight nine years in Sutton, and I was always the top like ten, top ten or top twenty, never fall off the top twenty. It was a company of over one thousand realtors, and always a top one percent on the real estate board. So that was a really good career run. But you get tired.、Um, in two thousand and six, so I've been a realtor for thirteen years already.、Um, I just feel tired of running. Wanted to do something else because you will always be on the phone, always, you know,、uh, competing for listings. And then、um, I saw on Facebook、um, there is something called a, a training conference, and I reached out to a brother from my church. He also became a realtor. He joined Keller Williams. Then I gave him a call. I go, brother Rick,、um, do you think I can go to this training too?、Um, he said, yes, of course. And actually, I was supposed to get a complimentary ticket because I'm top one percent, but I, I just paid for it. I went to、um, New Orleans. It's my first time going to New Orleans. It's a conference by Keller Williams、um, because I read the book Millionaire Real Estate Agent. I go, wow, I want to, you know,、um, be with this amazing company because they have all like they wrote the book Millionaire Real Estate Agent. So 
Um, of course, I want to be with a company that you know have all like you know interview all the agents across North America and see how these millionaire real estate agents produce. I I already hit my million dot one million GCI gross commission income in two thousand and six. So yeah, I, I want to have breakthrough. I want to learn how to build a team. You know, I would be a listing agent when I sell a home. I don't even know have time to take my sellers to go out to be a buyer agent. So I, I was always focused on getting listings and double ending my listings. So I went to Keller William, and、um, yes, so they welcomed me. But the office was in Burnaby. It was almost an hour drive to the market center or the office, and、uh, there was no parking and no closing room, and、uh, it was just kind of a lot of hurdle to to get to work. Where I used to be just five minutes away from my home, my parent, my parents' home, and、uh, yeah, it was it just didn't work out. The training, I love it. The company, I loved it. And one one thing that really、um, kind of seduced me, or、uh, motivated me, or inspired me to join Keller William was、um, the more、uh, the operation or the operating owner OP、um, said, operating partner、um, said, Melissa. Uh, I have a. Would you like to open Keller William West Side? Then I said, Oh wow! I、mm, owning a brokerage in West Side that would be amazing to have a market center in West Side, right?、Um, yeah, sure. That sounds amazing. I would love to do that.、Um, but you have to get forty、um, commitment letters signed. So you would kind of have to do recruiting first. You come over, and then you would have to sign forty commitment letters. Um, to have people join Keller William, then we can open the Vancouver West Side. Then I said, okay, sure, that sounds great. And Keller William has a profit share model. Profit share、um, is when you run a brokerage, you would have revenue and then subtract all your expenses. Then you would have your profit. So profit is a, you know, it's. Like you make commission and then you spend all your money and whatever's left, right? So、um, you know, it's you. You can only share profit when there is a profit. If there's no profit, there's no profit share. So、um, yeah, you, basically, I did attract agents to Keller William, but the profit share was just kind of、uh, very minimal. So anyway, during my、uh, kind of agent attraction recruiting process at Keller William, I met. I would try to connect with some top agents, so they are called headhunter. So、um, I talked to one of my ex business partner.、Uh, she is also top one percent, doing really well in the West Side. Oh, well, I'm gonna call her and talk to her. So we went for lunch, and you know we had a really we、uh, connected really well. And she said, you know, I'm already like、uh, have an office in Richmond, and I will open West Side already. But we don't need Keller William. We just open our own boutique brokerage. I said, oh, that sounds great. We don't even need to recruit forty people. We don't need to pay franchise. We can just open our own, right? <laughs> so that was the beginning.、Uh, as a as a friend and a connection, we we are really good together. But running a business and being a top realtor are two totally different、um, kind of skill sets that you need to have. So, so we started. Then I don't need to, you know, recruit forty people for Keller William and to pay the franchise fee. I don't need to follow the model and systems. We can just be our own. I mean, we are three top one percent realtors, right? So she has another top one percent realtor who already has、uh, office front, kind of like a boutique office、uh, in Richmond, number two. Road and Blundell. Then I went to her office and I'm like, okay, but I don't work in Richmond.、Uh, it takes me to cross over the bridge. I like to really hyper focus and dominate Vancouver, either West Side or East Side, to just hyper focus and sell it because I know it and it's easier for me to serve. I I don't want to drive to a bridge to sell in Richmond. But because my other two business partner already said, "Oh, we're gonna start in Richmond," then okay, we、we'll、took over the lease that was seven thousand dollars, and then、um, then we need to rent another West Side office. The West Side office in Carrollsdale was thirteen thousand. So thirteen thousand plus seven thousand dollars is about twenty thousand dollars as our two office,、um, two office rent. That's just the rent. That's just the brick and mortar. And plus, we have to hire、uh, receptionists. Two receptionists. We have to hire conveyance.、Uh, we have to hire accounting to do everybody's、uh, payroll. And we have to 
hire um, a managing manager. We didn't even have a manager because if you,、um, we didn't even have an experienced manager. So how if a realtor would run into problem, they would call our inexperienced manager, and the manager would say, "Oh,、um, call a lawyer, seek legal advice." You know, your manager would not like the manager we can afford is just our in-house.、Uh, In-house manager who is just like a salesperson, like the rest of us. I mean, of course, he passed his exams. He has a manager license, but it's not. I'm used to a manager that has over like twenty, thirty, fifty. I don't know, combined experience of over twenty-five years, right? I'm used to a very experienced manager. But if you hire an experienced manager, how much would an experienced manager ask for? Minimum a hundred grand, right? We don't have a hundred grand to pay to pay an experienced manager, but you know. Not at the moment, so we hire in-house、um, kind of a new manager. We just get our own agents, my assistant,、um, my showing assistant, to get his managing license. He has an MBA. Get his manager license and be our manager. So this is a lot of kind of untraditional boutique brokerage. I don't know. You have the same problem, but you know it's very hard to hire.、Uh, A manager that helps your company to grow, that's compliant and also that has the experience. So that is that was my、uh, brokerage, Maxell West Coast Realty. Because we have three top one percent realtors, we are very,、um, very glorious,、um, very famous in our community, and we did over five hundred million of sales volume, over five hundred million, including pre sales, exclusives, MLS, and we onboarded. Um, about a hundred, about one hundred and twenty-five agents in the two years we opened our brokerage. So, but after running it two years, if you've ever opened a brokerage before, or if you've ever opened a restaurant before, you know it's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. It's very hard to be at a level where you can、uh, be profitable. That is called the、um, critical mass or breaking point or break even point. So、um, after two years, I look at the model.、Um, we worked on it. I was doing I was doing like sales meeting, coaching, training, splitting my leads to my team leaders.、Um, that was one of our models. We had team leaders and we have、um, like senior associates and junior associates. I was. Split my own leads to the senior associates, and they would get the junior associates to do the showings, and we have a split model like that. So I would give out all my leads to my、uh, team leaders or senior associates, and they would have the junior associates,、uh, new realtors, do the showings. So that was our model, and I was a sales manager, a coach, a mentor. And I was still doing some sales myself because some of my clients still want to just deal with me. So I was wearing many hats, and I was also director of the company. Being a director, we have you know have our、uh, business owner meeting, and、uh, looking at the numbers, run the financials, and we are losing money after two years of.、Um, and also there is a director dispute. That part is just bad for mental health.、Um, if you.、Um, <laughs> It's very similar to running a franchise. So, for example, if somebody was trying to sell you a franchise, you are building somebody's brand and paying them money. Do you want to do that? I paid quarter million into Maxell, and I bought myself a job for two years. Do you want to do that? Think about it. If somebody is trying to tell you、um, or sell you a franchise, it's basically paying. Or you're buying, paying money to buy a job because you want to build a business, right? This is owning a business and it's a dream, right? Yeah. If you, if I didn't know better, that sounded really good. Now I know better, and don't go that route because I've been there. It's not fun. It's almost、uh, kind of brain damaging, bad for mental health. <laughs> Just go back to sales. Keep my life simple. So that's what I did. So after two years, I decided, you know what? I'm I lost my quarter million.、Um, too much drama, and I'm being criticized about not sacrificing my my time enough to contribute to the company. I don't want I don't want this. This is not my life. You know, it's not worth it. So I lost a quarter million. I just want to close it. I want to escape. I'm gonna resign as director, and then somebody else can deal with it. So I resign as director,、um, and I called. I called my OP Juliana and I said, or text her. I said, Juliana, how did you close a brokerage? Because I would like to close my brokerage. They told me I cannot because I have all these、uh, pending deals. And then she said, Uh, yeah, you can. 
I'll set up a meeting with you. <laughs> so she set up a meeting with, uh, so she became my sponsor because she was already in EXP and she closed down Keller William. And she set up a meeting with me, with Phil, who was in Victoria. Actually, I think Phil flew in from Victoria to have a meeting with me at the Vancouver Fairmont. We were having coffee and I was kind of like really stressed out because I was, you know, still director, still doing sales. And, um, you know, my, you know, my business partners, they want to sue each other, you know, say who did this and who did that and then kind of like misuse the money and things like that. So that was a lot of drama and it's still going on. My ex, my ex business partners still want to sue each other. It's been two years. Is that what you want? If you go into a partnership, if you sign a franchise agreement, you could be up for that. I want to like stop you. Don't do it. Don't pay money to build somebody's brand or even your own. Don't do it. So anyways, I called her and um, she sent me up with a meeting with Phil. And Phil is kind of like just a very generous, fatherly, like um, fun person to be with. And then, um, yeah, he goes, oh, these are the contacts. This is what I recommend you to do. You should just, if you can move everyone over to EXP, then you'll be set because EXP has a revenue share model. And I'll talk about that another time because it takes a little bit to kind of see it. Um, I go, yeah, that sounds great. And where's your office? Well, we're cloud-based. We don't have an office. I go, oh, really? So that means I just work from home. I don't have to drive to my office. That's great. I love it. I don't, I don't want to go to office anymore. I just want to work from home. I just want to be at home. I just want to like focus back on my sales, have my like former life, good life back as a top realtor. I just want to go back to sales. Free me from drama. Free me from like, hand holding people. I just want to focus back on my own and be in front production and just kind of recover, mental recovery. So, um, yeah, so Phil was great. So I go, okay, yeah, he will be my sponsor. And Juliana, of course, introduced me to Phil. So Juliana is my direct sponsor and Phil is kind of my grand sponsor, uh, kind of like a granddad. So we're family. Um, yeah, so he's been great. It's been, this is now um, September of 2021. Along the way, he's always tell me, oh, Melissa, you should do this, you should do that. And then he's always been there and very resourceful, really appreciate it. He really doesn't owe me anything because uh, from what I pay to the company, $16,000 cap, the company actually rewards him and he wants to see me succeed and he wants to see me grow. And this is um, why I want to just come in here and just talk to you about my own personal experience so far. And what I've seen now is um, this is, if you haven't seen um, the fine, this is just my own experience to tell you why every agent should be at EXP. If you don't look at um, the numbers, which m maybe you, if you want, if you are interested in looking at the numbers, um, you should definitely contact me and I can crunch your numbers for you because make a decision. It should be, um, for me, it was kind of escape out of my, um, kind of crazy, like managing brokerage. But if, when I looked at the numbers, because Phil gave me the numbers matching it side by side, there's nowhere else I should be at. It would be financially irresponsible if I don't go to EXP, because when I um, join EXP as a top producer, um, I give the company maximum $16,000. You know, in my first few deals, I would have hit my cap, which is $16,000. So from the $16,000, $8,000, the company uh, split it to Juliana, Phil, and then all the way above. But they don't owe me anything. They are my sponsor because they introduced me to such amazing platform. But the company rewards them because the, um, they help, they spread the word. They introduce uh, people to EXP. It's kind of like a referral fee. So yeah, so it's been great so far. Um, EXP have six revenue streams, four disruptors. The first disruptor is the cloud-based platform EXP world. So we have all our meetings, uh, trainings in EXP world. So it's all cloud-based. It's just like a full serv service brokerage, but no brick and mortar. This really hit home 
with me because I was paying twenty thousand dollars to for physical office, and I hated it. I hated it with a passion because I have to dress up. I have to go there for no money. Do you want to dress up and go somewhere for no money? It doesn't. It's not production for what for socializing. If you want to socialize, call me out for coffee. Take me to a happy hour. Treat me to a glass of wine. Don't force me to go to the office. It was. I really hated it with a passion, and my business partner said. We're gonna make you come and pick up your commission check. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Because I don't like to go out, like you know, not have makeup. Because I'm director, owner, top realtor. I need to go out, do my hair, put on my jewelry, put on my clothes. I cannot go to the office in my like workout clothes, right? I need to look good. So it took me a lot of time to get out the door. So you want me to go and pick up my commission check? If I have like forty checks, I have to go forty times just to pick up my check, just so you can say hi to me. Is that really a money producing, producing activity? I don't think so. I hated it with a passion. I really hated it because I got my deposit, like my checks, my commission checks, deposit into my bank account at at my previous brokerage at Sun. And now EXP, of course, deposit all your money into your bank account. And EXP even has a photo deposit. So if I have a client, they buy a property, and I have a commission check. I would just take a photo. I would take a photo and then boom. Well, I take a photo and send it to my secretary, and she fills in the forms, and then it's deposit. You don't even have to go to the bank anymore. Imagine how much time you save. Because I was looking at one of five, my former agents from Maxon West Coast Realty. She was going to the office at one a.m. She lives in Surrey. Her office is in like Richmond or like Westside. She drove one hour. Midnight to deposit a check? Really? I would like to sleep. No, I don't want to deal with checks. Save my time, please. Save my money. Save my gas. Save my time. Time is something everybody has equal. Twenty four hours. Don't waste my time. I don't think I can be like. I hated it. Seriously, with a passion. Um, yeah. So I don't have to go to office anymore, even for deposit checks from. It's great. That's the money. That's why whenever、um, I jump on the Thursday、uh, Zoom Explain call,、um, Phil asks me, "So how do you feel?" I go, "I feel like I have so much time because I just wake up. I work in my home office. A lot of realtors, you would probably have a home office set up at home, anyways. I just work at home. I go to my computer. I make my calls. You know, I still hit over a million GCI last year. It was great." This year is very on track, but now it's time for me to share my exponential experience with you, and I would like to partner with you. Ask me how. It's not、um, I recruit you or you become my downline. We actually are going to be in business together. We become business partners, and、uh, I will show you how. So if you're interested, contact me.、Uh, my cell phone is six zero four seven eight three. Eight two seven two, and I will explain more in other videos. Cheers! Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Melissa Wu. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share it with your family and friends, and smash the like button. Thank you. 你好，我是胡建龙。如果你喜欢这个 video 的话，请你 subscribe to 我们的 YouTube channel， 然后跟大家分享，还有给我一个赞，谢谢。你好，我系胡锦龙。如果你喜欢呢个 video 嘅话，请你 subscribe to 我哋嘅 YouTube channel， 同大家分享，仲有点个赞，多谢。